Voilà. Ça, c'est du gaz de broussaille. Et ça, c'est de la lumière de broussaille. This isn't just a pile of rotting wood. It's a forgotten power plant. Hidden within this mound is a natural engine capable of producing heat, gas, electricity, even car fuel without burning a single log. No fossil fuels, no emissions, no machines, just microbes, moisture, and time. Half a century ago, a French forester named Jean Pen discovered a way to tap into the energy of decomposition creating a system so efficient, it heated his home, powered his car, and grew tropical fruit, all from waste. Yet today, it's vanished from public memory. Why, and what are we missing? Let's find out. The Accidental Discovery in the Forest In the early 1970s, deep in the forests of southern France, Jean Pen wasn't trying to change the world. He was just trying to survive. With limited money and 590 acres of forest under his care, Jean and his wife faced a simple but pressing problem. How to make use of the overwhelming piles of brushwood that surrounded them. Firewood wasn't practical. Transporting and storing logs was too expensive and time-consuming. So, almost as an afterthought, Jean began chipping the wood into smaller pieces and piling them up. That's when something strange happened. Jean noticed that the wood chips, when soaked and left to rot, began to heat up intensely. The piles gave off steam, even on cold days. At first, it seemed like a curiosity, maybe even a danger. But Jean wasn't the kind of man to ignore strange patterns in nature. He started to observe more closely, tracking temperatures, moisture levels, and the rate of decomposition. What he found was stunning. A large pile of decomposing wood could generate heat continuously for months. For most people, this would have ended as a fun backyard experiment. But Jean saw potential. If a pile of compost could naturally produce this much heat, why couldn't it be harnessed? Not just for heating a home, but for so much more. And with that realization, a seed was planted, one that would grow into a revolutionary system of off-grid energy. Not through machines or combustion, but through nature's oldest and quietest force. Decay. The rise of the biomer. Jean Payne began experimenting with structure. His first compost heaps were simple rectangular piles, but over time, he learned that circular designs were more efficient. They conserved heat, held moisture longer, and allowed decomposition to happen faster and more evenly. From these evolving designs, the Biomure was born, a natural reactor that didn't burn wood, but fermented it. He packed 40 tons of chipped brushwood into a circular mound, carefully soaking it with water. Inside the pile, he ran 650 feet of polyethylene pipe in loops. Cold groundwater entered on one side, traveled through the heart of the compost, and came out the other end scalding hot, reaching temperatures of up to 140 degrees. This was enough to heat Jean's entire 1,000-square-foot home and supply hot tap water day and night for 18 months, all without burning a single log. But Jean didn't stop there. At the core of the Biomure, he placed a sealed steel tank filled with more soaked wood chips. As the internal heat built up, the decomposition released methane gas, which he collected in inflated truck inner tubes. This gas powered their stoves, oven, and even a generator. Later, Jean modified a car to run on compressed methane from his system. What began as forest waste had become a complete, closed-loop source of renewable energy. Simple, sustainable, and brilliantly effective. Nature's power fully realized. The most astonishing part of Jean Payne's system wasn't just the hot water or the methane gas. It was how everything worked in harmony, 
quietly, efficiently, and with almost no waste. His vegetables thrived in compost-rich soil without irrigation. His goats, bedded on wood chips, were healthier. His home stayed warm, and his appliances ran on gas he harvested himself. Even when the biomure had exhausted its energy, the leftover wood chips had transformed into nutrient-rich fertilizer. Gene wasn't using exotic equipment or expensive technology just forest debris, water, and patience. The entire system ran without electricity, fans, or pumps. Everything was gravity-fed, heat-driven, and natural. It was more than a compost pile. It was a living machine, fueled by decomposition. In many ways, Jean had cracked a code. He had found a way to live in balance with the land using its natural rhythms to supply his daily needs. And the fact that this system worked, even in the chilly foothills of the Alps, made it all the more incredible. It wasn't theoretical. It wasn't a dream. It was real. For Jean Pen, nature was not something to conquer. It was something to partner with. And the results were astonishing. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The world takes notice, then forgets. As John Payne's Biomure continued to impress, word of his work began to spread. Journalists, scientists, and curious minds traveled to his forest to witness the system firsthand. Photos of steaming wood piles, lush vegetable gardens, and methane-powered stoves found their way into newspapers and magazines in 1981, Reader's Digest ran a feature on him. His book, detailing the method and philosophy behind the Biomure, sold over 100,000 copies. To many, it seemed like the beginning of a new kind of energy revolution, one not built in labs or factories, but in backyards and forests. Jean was even hailed by energy writers as someone who might shape the future of sustainable living. But then, something strange happened. Interest faded. The excitement drifted. No companies invested. No government has adopted the method. Gene's system remained largely a personal experiment, admired but not replicated. Perhaps it was too labor-intensive, or maybe it didn't fit into the mold of large-scale energy production. Either way, the world moved on. As solar panels and wind farms rose, the Biomure faded into the background, a forgotten path toward sustainability that most never even knew existed. But the question still lingers. Why? Why we left it behind? The truth is, Jean Payne's system works. It's clean, efficient, and circular. But it demands something we're not used to giving. Effort. You can't just buy a Biomure at a store or install it on a weekend. It takes planning, physical labor, and access to a steady supply of organic material, ideally from your forest. That alone places it out of reach for most urban dwellers and modern lifestyles built on convenience. Then there's the smell, the mess, and the scale. A steaming, rotting pile of wood and manure in your backyard isn't exactly neighbor-friendly. It's easy to see why most people, given the choice, would rather just turn on a gas heater or plug into the grid. And corporations? They had no reason to promote it. There was nothing to sell, no recurring payments, no profit margins. Jean Pan didn't create a product. He created a process. And that's hard to package. The failure wasn't in the design. It was in the system that surrounded it. One that rewards ease, speed, and profit over sustainability, patience, and independence. And in that trade-off, a revolutionary idea was quietly left behind in the woods. The lessons we're ignoring. Jean Payne's work wasn't just about energy. It was a blueprint for living differently. Closer to the land. More in tune with natural cycles and less dependent on fragile systems. 
At a time when energy prices are spiking and climate change feels more urgent than ever, his forgotten method feels strangely current. It didn't rely on high-tech materials or government incentives. It didn't pollute or produce waste. And it didn't require drilling, mining, or manufacturing. Just time, knowledge, and a willingness to observe. In a single process, Gene solved multiple problems. Heating, cooking, power, fuel, soil fertility, and even wildfire prevention. All from materials most people throw away. He showed that sustainability doesn't always come from invention. Sometimes, it comes from noticing what nature is already doing and working with it. Yet today, instead of scaling down and simplifying, we chase bigger, faster, and more expensive fixes. Gene's story reminds us that innovation isn't always about new tech. Sometimes, it's about looking closer at what we already have. We have the tools, we know. What we lack is the mindset. And until that changes, the kind of future Jean imagined will remain buried under our disregard. Could it work today? The obvious question is, could a system like Jean Pen's work today beyond a quiet forest in France? The answer depends on how we define work. If we're talking about raw effectiveness, the Biomure proved it could provide reliable hot water, cooking gas, electricity, and fertilizer without fossil fuels. In rural areas with land and resources, this method could be transformative. Imagine communities using brushwood from wildfire-prone forests to produce energy and protect themselves at the same time. But in cities, the challenges grow. Space is limited. Brushwood isn't exactly piling up in apartment buildings, and most people don't have the time or desire to manage a giant compost reactor. That said, the principles behind Gene's work could inspire smaller, modular systems designed for urban use, perhaps shared among neighborhoods or tied into local farms. What's missing isn't the science, it's the support. We fund massive wind farms and solar fields, but we overlook low-tech solutions that don't promise big profits. Gene's Biomure asks us to rethink how we measure progress, not just in watts or dollars, but in resilience, independence, and harmony with nature. Could it work today? It already did. The real question is, do we want it again? Jean Pen didn't invent a machine. He uncovered a relationship, a quiet collaboration between human need and nature's design. His system didn't ask for extraction, only patience. It didn't pollute, it was restored. In a world racing toward high-tech fixes and billion-dollar solutions, his forgotten method offers something rare, simplicity that works. We often overlook what doesn't scream for attention, what doesn't promise profit. But maybe the answers we're looking for aren't hidden in labs or locked behind patents. Maybe they're steaming gently in a forgotten forest, waiting for someone to notice again. The choice isn't technical, it's personal. Will we choose to remember? <laughs>